we must come together we must speak with one voice let's be realistic about what's happening on our continent if we do not come together our africa is gone this is not a joke this is not a joke i'm giving it to you straight We are the only ones that are too busy running away from our primary anger, which is Africa. But guess what? When we run away from our primary anger, we're also doing a serious disservice to our children. They're counting on us to defend Africa. They're counting on us to fix what we failed to create, to fix for centuries. Our children did not choose to be born in such a world. And so you and I, we have a responsibility to fix this before we go. We may not be able to see it all to the bitter end, but we should leave it in a nice little package that when your granddaughter looks at you in the face and say, grandmother, 20 years ago, there were problems in your Africa. 20 years ago, there were problems with the black race. Black race. What did you do, grandma? I hope that you will be able to say, granddaughter, sit down. These were the issues in our beloved continent of Africa. These were the issues with our black race. This is what we did together as your mothers, as your grandmothers, as your aunts. We came together and we did something about it. This is where we have left. While we may not say mission accomplished, we can say aluta continua, but this is where you need to pick up. May the beat continue. For you to be able to answer that question to your granddaughter, like I just stipulated, the preparation for that answer begins now. The preparation for what needs to be done begins now. We must come together. We must speak with one voice. Let's be realistic about what's happening on our continent. If we do not come together, our Africa is gone. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. I'm giving it to you straight. And I'll tell you another serious problem we have right now. There are elections coming up at the African Union. They happen every four years. There are elections that are now calling for gender parity at the African Union. The last AU reform said 50% of the African Union leadership must be female. That means if the chairperson is a woman, the deputy has to be a man and vice versa. And of the remaining six commission positions, three must be women and three must be men. Here comes our problem. For whatever reason, the chairman of the African Union has been protected to keep him from having anybody competing against him. You know what, that, what does that mean? That means African women have been disadvantaged and technically being barred from competing for the top position. When you protect the men to remain in position, especially after four years of imploding the African Union, it makes no sense as to why that same man should be given four more years to continue to destroy the continent. Most Africans don't even know his name. People in president's offices don't even know who Musafaki is. Never heard of his name. That's how insignificant he is. And yet, because he's getting the support of those who want to see a dead horse leading the African Union, a dead horse that will give it a blind eye while they continue to loot the continent, a dead horse that will sell the Africa to the highest bidder. Already rumor has it. The contracts are already being sold, being sold to the Chinese, being sold to the Middle Easterners, being sold to the, to the Europeans and anybody else who won the contract. Here's what's gonna happen, my sisters. If Musa Faki is allowed to have four more years, we're gonna wake up four years from now, all the continental projects are gone, already given out to non-Africans. These projects might take a long time to finish, 10 years, 15, 20, 30 years. Inga Dam is a 30-year project. You can imagine whoever is gonna be the shareholder for Inga Dam? The Inga Dam on the Congo River, when complete, is gonna power all of Africa and part of Europe. 
Can you begin to imagine how much wealth is going to be amassed by those who are not Africans? We will not own the Inga Dam. We will enjoy the electricity, but that's about it. We'll work on the Inga Dam, but that's about it. We will never be the owners of the Inga Dam. The contract would be gone. The Senegal to Djibouti Highway, the major commercial farms that are going to be created in order to feed 1.27 billion people, the infrastructure projects that are going to be needed in order to move clothes and house 1.7 billion people, all those major continental projects, my brothers and sisters, we will not be anywhere near those contracts because we don't have the money it takes to compete to get those continental projects. And then where are we going to be four years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, everything is going to be gone. Africa is going to be built, but we own nothing. We will be renters in our continent. And if we cannot own and control Africa, then what? It is over for us, my sisters. Completely over. That is our reality, my sisters. That is our reality. We are at a critical time that we must stand up, we must rise up, and we must defend that which belongs to our children. It's not about me and you. We are done, we've lived our lives. But we have a responsibility to our children. We have a responsibility to make sure that we fix this for them. We defend our Africa by any means necessary because it is the right thing to do. We have a responsibility to do that. We owe it to our children to do it. And that conversation and that awakening needs to happen now. We do not have not even a minute to waste. That self-hate, it's got to go. That mistrust of each other, it's got to go. This is a do or die moment. If you care about your children, if you care about what happens to the black race, I'm asking all of you to wake up from your slumber. And once and for all, we should say enough is enough. And as mothers, we're the first educators, we're the first teachers, and we're the ones who have always led the way, even most of the time from behind the scenes. This time, once again, it's time for us to rise up and we hope we can make a commitment to lead from the front this time.